Jean-François. How are you? Hi, Pietro. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Nice, nice uh, joining us. <laughs> Absolutely. We can see uh, quite a few already uh, getting connected. Uh, again, for those that are getting connected now, we are live with Jean-François uh, Jean Mojon, Technical Director of Cyrus Watches and owner of uh, Cronaut. Uh, Cronaut being known as one of the most spectacular movement manufacturer, uh, manufacturers out there. So, Jean-François, Shall we talk Cronod? Shall we talk Cyrus? How, where is your heart now? Is your heart in Cronod, movement development, or Cyrus has completely taken over? No, my heart is in watchmaking. <laughs> and you know, and also working with uh, a nice team, nice people. And uh, we always had a very good uh, communication and partnership with uh, Sirius and it's continue. We have crazy also product in the pipe for the future, but we also continue to work with, with others, with also famous brands, with uh, Hermes, for example, and others. And uh, that's, that's why our job is so, so nice because we can share all our patients with different universe, with different people, different brands. Absolutely. Very interesting. When, when did it all start for you, uh, Jean-Francois? Uh, is it at the time of the Harry Winston Opus 10? Like, you know, for a lot of independent watchmakers, that particular adventure was a game changer. No? Uh, a lot of independent watchmakers understood that the concept that they developed within the Opus could have been something that could have gone on for, you know, for a separate career. Uh, yes, absolutely. For us, it was really a milestone, uh, the Opus 10 in 2010, after five years, uh, uh, started the company. Uh, and then uh, I think it was also easier to, to get contact with the, with the new customers, new clients, because they, they knew that we, can, that we are able to, to do such complication. But uh, it's only one milestone. We, we have many more uh, in that between. And uh, we also have a really exciting project for the future. So again, we are live with uh, Jean-Francois Mojon from uh, Cyrus Watches and from uh, Cronaut, of course. And uh, we're going to have an introduction to the work of Jean-Francois. And then if at any point you feel like uh, uh, making any questions, asking any questions to us, please feel free. All our broadcasts, they remain online on our IGTV account where normally we get the most of the views. So even if you have uh, questions later on, please let us know. Uh, it's nice to see that uh, Cyrus Watches Italy is uh, connected as well. Ciao ragazzi. <laughs> Welcome. Very good to have you. And so Jean-Francois, up until the Opus, uh, saga. The idea of collaboration between different brands, different makers was not that developed. Do you think that that was an icebreaker as well in this in this sense? Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic uh, idea, concept to work together. Uh, we, we have to remember that uh, watchmaking is, is a sharing uh, passion, but it's also sharing skills. We, we have to, to work with the best in each field. And uh, that's why uh, make everything internally is, I think, not what uh, probably is the best for small companies is then to, to, try to, to work in team. The team work is, is very important. Absolutely, absolutely. And was this a dimension that uh, uh, in the passage so after the Opus uh, 10, just to go by order, of course, in 2000 and, um, uh, from 2010, you developed Cronod in a, in a great way, uh, you know, developing collaborations with brands like, and I say this, uh, I, I, most of our followers will be familiar to it, but not everybody knows that Cronod is behind some of the most incredible movements that powered, you know, this is from um, uh, MBNF, for example, HYT, uh, Chapek, uh, Hermes, as you said, just to just to name uh, just to name few. Uh, so, in that dimension of engineer for other brands, 
then you turn a little bit now as a developer of a brand. So you're more concentrating on the development of Cyrus. Do you see a big difference or are you approaching your work more or less in the same way as when you were only on Chronod? Uh, just to say also that we collaborate with Cyrus uh, since 2009. That means yeah. that it's a long-term collaboration that we develop yeah. all the, the, the collection of Cyrus. What is a bit special by Cyrus is that we are involved very, uh, very early in the process. That means that we propose also new concepts, new ideas from the beginning, and that we, we share that during all the process, development process, we deliver a complete watch. We make the after-sale service is really the complete service to, to, to the brand. And yeah. that makes so the, 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 the work with Sarius so, so exciting. Yeah. And uh, as you were working with Sarius, uh, you know, with Cyrus in all these years, the input of the collaborations with other brands, and uh, there is Giancarlo Panaccio also mentioning uh, your work on the Mechanical DG, um, as well yeah. for the Guzzo yeah. Gono. Yeah. What, were these collaborations very important for you as a watchmaker to grow, to have more ideas, to uh, to yeah, to to build your uh, you know the future of your art of watchmaker? Yes, you're absolutely right. I think each client of Chronod benefits also from the from the partnership with with Sarius or with other uh, people. That's why. It's important for us to keep always open with collaboration, with uh, with also new new customer, new clients coming. This year we will launch two new uh, two new products for new brands, and that's also very important to 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 share the ideas, to share the concepts, and to be better also in future. Uh, yeah. We have a very large base of components of uh, functions, ready mechanism that we can also propose for for the customer. It's yeah. uh, it's a big advantage. We be can be quicker on the market. We can also have a bet better also uh, price uh, for the development, and yeah. uh, each one benefit for for this collaboration. So the. Uh, the answer to my question would be Cyrus and Cronauts have, have really worked hand in hand, taken from each other for, uh, for mutual development, if you like. But to do this, uh, Jean-Francois, you need a certain degree of freedom and independence. So how important was to be independent in all these process, uh, creative process, if you like? Uh, you know, we are not really independent <laughs> in terms of uh, innovation because each time for each uh, customer or brand, we have to fit some uh, specification, of course, some budget. Yes. And, uh, but it's, it's natural. Innovation is linked with some constraints also. And it's, uh, that makes the challenge also so, so interesting. Because if everything would be uh, open, no limits, okay. Why at the end, uh, it's in these limits, in these constraints that we can be also better and uh, specific to each brand. Very interesting, very interesting that you are pointing that out because in a project like, for example, uh, the work you did in collaboration with uh, HYT, for example, there was a big amount of constraints as well based on the new technology developed by Pressiflex of the liquid yes. fluid. And yes. basically, you know, I am not a watch expert as such myself, but in a, in a, on a piece like this, you can really see the constraints that for you was to squish the mechanical part of the movement completely on one part of the case rather than on the whole of the case. So is this uh, something you know you are referring to as well? Yes, it's a very good example. And not only because the lack of space, but also be in, in terms of, uh, you know, culture, because we, we are facing people with a complete other culture. 
they are coming more for, 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 for the physical, for other fields. And it was so interesting to share with those people, to understand it, each other's. And then at the end, to have really a very nice product, a very innovative also product. And uh, once again, we, we, we need these constraints to, to, to have or to reach the best of what we can in team. Absolutely. And when, uh, for example, in the work with my Max Visser on the LM1, uh, mm -hmm. what, was, what was the main constraint in that, in that case? Was it obviously to project the balance wheel over the dial rather than under the dial? And how did it work? What, what Max, did Max come with, a, with the idea pretty much already in his head or was it really a hand-in-hand -hand, uh, development? No, I often say that this project is also particular for us because Max came with a clear idea of yeah. what he, he wanted. Sometimes it's yeah. a process with the customer to, to build the concept. But for this case, it was not, not the fault. Really, Max came with, with a, really a design, with a concept. And when we look the design from the first design and the product, there's no big differences. We face these challenges, yes, by putting the balance wheel on the top of the dials, but also sometimes it's uh, coming from parts that we didn't expect. For example, the power reserve indication, <laughs> we had yeah. some, some issues to solve or the, some problematic to solve in order to, to have something uh, working properly. Yeah, yeah. So what makes you tick, uh, Jean-Francois, is when you achieve something that has not been done before, something that is really pushing watchmaking forward. And we have to say with your vertical tourbillon with Cyrus, this box has been ticked uh, absolutely. And you have something that is, that is a never seen before. How satisfied you were and you are about uh, the iconic vertical tourbillon? Uh, maybe first I would like to say that challenges are really something that uh, that uh, that is my my motivation every day is really yeah. facing new challenges and then uh, concretize ID concretize concepts to the end and particularly for the vertical to be honest it was really uh, really new challenges and uh, also in a new way because it's not only technical but it has also to be nice also at the end if i can say that 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 means Absolutely. that the design uh, coming from benjamin muller is is really a big part of the project is the mix between the design the aesthetic, the elegance, and also the technique. And uh, it's probably also a way for the future of uh, Sirius is also finding this, this mix is not only the technique, but is really the best way between the design and, and the technique. And I think that the Turbion Vertical is a good example. Yes, actually, I was going to ask you, um, because of course we are passionate about independent watchmaking because it's it's a form of art where challenging the limits is the reason of existence of this form of art and it shows how the human intellect and the human uh, craft can overcome obstacles with uh, you know finding new solutions so in the case of the vertical tourbillon there is a there is a case of a vertical tourbillon may have a better accuracy because of the position is mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. compared to a standard a standard tourbillon but is that really an important point for you or was it more the spectacular aesthetics so the question is <laughs> accuracy yes. or aesthetics or both yeah it's uh, once again a good question uh, i would i would uh, answer for, uh, in the following manner first the inspiration came from the start of the tourbillon. That means the pocket watch, 
position in the vertical position that that also a meaning for for the tourbillon because he has to be uh, in the gravity that was the, f the, the 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 initial thinking about the product and then uh, with uh, Benjamin Muller then we we worked together to put it in the central position with the retrograde uh, minutes and re retrograde hours to really have once again a nice, authentic, uh, meaningful product at the end. And it was not really the research of the best accuracy that, that uh, challenges us the, the, the most. And it was not the end, end purpose was not the accuracy. If, if you understand, it was really the, right. the link with the, the past and the two beyond the vertical position and, and the aesthetic and also the watchmaking expertise. Absolutely, absolutely. So from your point of view, what is the role of watchmaking today? Uh, if I am a collector, why would I, would I choose you know, an extraordinary piece like the uh, vertical to be on surely not just to read the time so what is your uh, mm -hmm. what is the meaning of watchmaking in the in the in the times we are living where reading the time is not really uh, you know an important feature anymore no <clears throat> is is the, the the watchmaking independent watchmaking the small companies behind the small brands i think the they bring the craftsmanship product in very limited series. I think the people behind and the skills of the people behind are the main features. And of course, the product at the end, the quality, the aesthetic, I think the people who want to buy the products have to, to fall in love with, with the product and with the watch. I, I also often say is not uh, an action to sell the watch, but I think the watch itself speaks to, 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 to the people and, and sell itself because it's so beautiful. We can also see uh, most of the parts behind. And if we want to know more about the product, there are people just behind. You can also visit the, 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 the manufacturer. You can come to the local and visit and, and, and discuss with the watchmaker and, and discuss with the developer. That's part of the, of the history and part of the Cyrus product. Yeah, yeah which is something that product. you can't, absolutely, which is something you can't have on an industrial uh, product, of course, because exactly. of the scale of the operations. Uh, exactly. Jean -François, you've been around for a few years, like myself, in the, in the watch industry, so you've seen a few changes. Uh, when you were involved, for example, with the Opus 10, were you expecting such a renaissance, renaissance of the uh, independent watchmaking that we are living now, where maybe in the worst crisis we've ever seen for, unfortunately, the society and the world we live in, we seem to see a, an incredible uh, response from watch lovers, watch collectors towards independent watchmaking to the extent that, you know, at the limited edition we live of this, it's, uh, it's, our, um, you know, it's our core business, you know, to promote the independent watch, watch brands. But even when we started, I wasn't expecting such a, such a growth uh, all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Do you also remark uh, this specifically in these days? Yes, but uh, by speaking with uh, collectors, uh, clients uh, a bit all over the world, they are looking for different and special uh, products. They, they, they want to discover also new, new, new way to, to display the time, new way to, to show the, the, this fantastic technique uh, watchmaking technique and uh, who proposed that? I think the independence 
brands, watchmaker brands, and we have this uh, this chance to 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 grow step by step in this direction. But we have to keep our really uh, value uh, that is uh, this craftsmanship, this authenticity, this innovation, and and people behind. And uh, we will have a, a nice future, I'm sure. Fantastic, fantastic. I, I, I totally agree. And it's very interesting to hear it from your own voice. Um, coming back to uh, Cyrus, of course, uh, you have a, an incredible integrated operation that you can count on uh, at the moment. So without going into the details of you know 100%, 90%, 80% in-house manufacturing, but you master a lot within your operations. How important it is uh, being able to do a lot in-house? Uh, it's important to have the key uh, functions internally, but also to know that we cannot and we will not have everything internally. Once again, as I told you before, uh, we have fantastic partnership with suppliers, with partners. They are much better as us in some fields. And all together, we, we can bring the best product on the market. And that's important yeah. to, to know. I think this verti verticalization that we spoke uh, maybe 5, 10, 15 years ago, I think we realize, realize now that it's probably not the best way to proceed and surely not for Cronod. That uh, yeah. we prefer... Because of the... Yeah? No, sorry, I was going to say because of if you have a model that is focused on being creative and being dynamic, if you, are, if you have to stick to just, for example, one caliber or two calibers because the, these are the only ones that you can fully produce in-house, then you, you create limits for yourself. So it really depends on the objective that you want to, uh, you want to Yes, process. absolutely. For us, is the, the core business is surely the development, but yeah. also the watchmaker. We are also making our own decoration. Yeah. But everything would not be possible if we have not uh, really very good people in the logistic uh, to get the best product, the best, best components at the right time. That is also very important. Quality control. But the rest, the production of the components, that we leave that to, to the best suppliers. Very, uh, very interesting. Uh, there is a question from Giancarlo. Giancarlo, we'll go back to, to that a little bit later on, uh, just uh, to keep talking about Cyrus for now. Uh, the Klepsis case and the Klepsis model has become a little bit the image of, uh, of Cyrus. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you agree with this, but from the external point of view, it certainly is. Um, there is not just the, uh, the uh, vertical tool beyond, but you have worked on a on, on different variations, uh, you know, playing with GMT, retrograde uh, minutes, jumping hours, moon phases, Mars, Mars phases <laughs> as well, very recently. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, from the horological point of view, Cyrus has become a little bit a platform for, for, for presenting different, different kind of complications and being very dynamic in that respect. Yes, it's a good, is a good resume of, of Sirius is, is really uh, innovation, but in, sometimes it's not a crazy innovation. It's often a different way to, to propose a function, uh, to interpret a, a, a function. And for example, this uh, GMT is, uh, is nice also to see these retrograde functions, very useful easy to use with the pressure at nine, nine or just to set the right time when we are, the local time. And uh, this is typical Cyrus. Because also when you don't buy a watch just to read the time, 
it is nice to appreciate the mechanics for the functions that the mechanics can actually you know, propose to you. And uh, of course, retrograde and jumping indications are some of the most, uh, the most important ones. So we had the pleasure to see this GMT live in the, uh, in the last few weeks. And I was really, uh, really impressed. I have to say, Jean-Francois, one thing that is stunning is that when you think about Cyrus before touching the product, because of the square, you know, mainly square shape of the case, the fact that uh, uh, you, have a, you have a very open see-through of the dial and sometimes through the dial as well, it looks bigger than what it actually is. In the end, we're talking about a, a product that is very, very wearable and it's very ergonomic as well. So did you put special attention to that as well? Absolutely. It's the ergonomic in, in general is very important topics and it will be also much and much important in the future, not only yeah. for Cyrus, but in, in general. And especially for the GMT, we reduce the, the diameter of the case to 42 millimeters. And yeah. uh, we found not only us, but also discussing with other people that it's really the right dimension for the Cyrus products. Uh, and uh, the big opening, the look through the dial, see the movement, because is the uh, is is unique. What we can propose is developed yeah. in exclusivity for Cyrus. Important to to see it and to 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 share that with Appreciate with our it. customers. Yeah. Yes, I always say as a joke, uh, Jean-François, never trust the watch if you can't see the movement. <laughs> in, uh, in these yeah. days, surely I am one of those that really appreciates seeing the mechanics because yeah. that's you know that's what's special, you know, uh, in the end. Exactly, it is often hidden, uh, but we are proud of what we do, and then we we open it. On the back, you see the new also automatic caliber. Uh, for with the Cyrus version, that is also brand new, manufactured, developed by us, 100% Swiss made, and we have to be really uh, proud of that. So you are asking for the, this question now, Jean-Francois. Um, there is a, still a very big debate about the Swiss made. Uh, Swiss made, of course, has the, the regulations that uh, define what can be called Swiss made, and what cannot be called Swiss made, and how collectors should perceive the Swiss made. Now, in independent watchmaking, you know better than me from the AS, uh, AHCI, uh, which is the most important, of course, uh, uh, association of independent watchmakers, to the general world of watchmaking, now we're still in, in times where watchmaking is happening in every country. Of course, Switzerland is the epicenter because Switzerland is providing with the fundamental key parts that need, you know, that these watchmakers are using, of course, to, to, to develop their art. But times have changed, you know, from uh, 20, 25 years ago. How important is Swiss made today? And uh, what's, what's, how much you think that is still important for collectors? Yes, it's a big thematic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no. But it's interesting. No, no. And and, and sometimes uh, also uh, it uh, it drives to to a lot of discussions. But I would say worldwide, Swiss made has a, a value, and uh, the people are ready, or some people are ready also to pay more just to have the Swiss made. I'm just afraid that they not always know that is uh, not 100% Swiss made. And uh, that's why I would like once to, to have maybe a second label called 100% Swiss made. But, yeah. uh, because as a, as a reminder for those that are not familiar, to be called Swiss made, you have to justify 60% of the cost related to producing a watch as made in Switzerland. So there is a 40% value ratio that is open 
you know, for brands to uh, source, you know, parts from Japan, from, uh, you know, uh, China, wherever it may be, England, you know, in England, there is uh, this uh, production of this very special Vanta black material that is a famous example for, for England. Uh, but yes, Swiss made doesn't mean that the watch is 100% Swiss made, which is a bit of a contradiction. Yes, and we know that people are also buying uh, movements outside from Switzerland and just by disassembling bit decoration and uh, assembling, they are Swiss made. And Which is, uh, yeah. that should is not that a big a, risk yes, for the credibility yes, of the market? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And the risk also for the future. We have to be uh, transparent, authentic, and uh, also sharing really what we what we do, and I respect a lot the people who are really producing in Switzerland with with our cost, of course, but also managing what is close and uh, with with partner close to us. Yeah. Well, some uh, some independent watch brands have started to remove Swiss made from their dials because they they prefer explaining themselves what they really are, rather than uh, relying on a label to, to, tr to transfer a value like that. Um, exactly. have, you, have, you th have you thought about this? Is it something that you're not interested because of the political connotation uh, of this? Uh, uh, or, I mean, Cyrus is uh, Swiss made and will, uh, will, will always uh, carry the, the label, yes? Absolutely. Very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 very good. So thank you very much. Very, very interesting conversation, Jean-Francois. Uh, I can't believe already uh, 35 minutes have gone. Uh, cool. There is still this question from Giancarlo. Grazie, Giancarlo. Passo subito la, la domanda a Jean-Francois. The major challenge developing the Opus 10 and the mechanical. From the collector's perspective, the, 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 Opus, the Opus saga is still somehow the beginning of the modern wave of uh, independent watchmaking. So, what was the major challenge for you to develop that particular masterpiece and the mechanical? Yes, maybe first the mechanical, because it was one of our first projects uh, by starting the company in 2006 already, we started that. We had very uh, limited time also to develop it. Uh, we were under pressure of time and it was really challenging. Uh, really large numbers of components, uh, also the consumption of the energy was really a, a challenge. We learned a lot and, and at the end we had a, a functional and a reliable product, but it was not easy. By the Opus 10, it was a bit uh, different because we knew already that the time was, <laughs> was uh, very limited and we yeah. defined the concept also according to those, to this constraint. And uh, you remember 2009 was a difficult year because it was after the crash of 2008 and uh, we could really put quite all the stuff uh, dedicated to the, to the project. And at the end, we were on time with functional prototypes and it was really uh, a success. And it was also, for me, a, a really nice to remember at uh, that uh, project. It was really crazy. <laughs> we, we worked in the evening, on the weekends, and uh, fantastic uh, adventure. Nice. Thanks for sharing this with us. And uh, I also have, um, I hope that answered your question, Giancarlo. I also have another question in regards to the development of uh, Cyrus, where, you know, it, it is good to know that there is a demand for independent watchmaking, especially as independents are really showing watchmaking for what it is. It is an art. So, but every brand has a different potential. And I have seen with Cyrus, you're very careful in producing in a very, you know, low volumes. Uh, is that because of your current capacity or is it because you're very careful not to produce over what is the demand of the market so you then don't face any devaluation of the brand itself? 
Yes, you you you're right. We are not really commercial uh, brand. That means the product is is at the the top of the priority, and by by proposing a product in the very few and limited uh, production, uh, we know that the the, the people will also uh, have have uh, also put value on that. And also we have no scare to, to don't have the next product because we already work on it. And the next product is coming this year. Next year, we also have a planning. And, and that means that we are able to, to, to develop and produce new products. And it's also this innovation activity is, is not only for one or two years, but is our main focus for the brand. Very clear, very, very clear. Very, very interesting. Again, we are with Jean-Francois Bojon from Cyrus and from uh, Cronod. For those of you that are into independent watchmaking, you know how many uh, exciting um, orological developments this gentleman has been involved with uh, uh, in the past. Can we, can we ask you, Jean-Francois, if there is one achievement that makes you particularly proud? I know that you may just answer Every movement, watch movement is like a is like a baby, so I can't choose between my babies. But like there must be one moment, one piece where you really had an epiphany, a revelation, and you said, Oh yeah, I can do this and I can't believe I can't believe I made it. Uh, you know, my answer is is often when I, I've been asked for, for that that it will be the next one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because we are really working on it. Uh, it's a challenge today uh, for, 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 for bringing the, the, next, uh, the next one uh, alive, the next baby. And, and that's why it's probably because I'm really concerned today. It's, it's the most uh, challenging. But if, if I respond for, for the past, I would say that the, the, the Opus 10, of course, the Klepsis from Sar for Sirius and the Legacy Machine LM1, there are three milestones for, for me and for the company. So you're very, those are the ones that really make you proud. Yes, not the only one, but uh, <laughs> they yeah. are, yeah, they yeah, are no, really absolutely. on the top. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're showing a picture of, uh, of you in the workshop. Um, how, how do you get your inspiration? So are you a, 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 like an engineer, you think mechanically and then you try to adapt mechanics to aesthetics? Or are you an uh, aesthet where you look at what you want to achieve and then you find the mechanics for that? And how important is teamwork, as we can see here in this image we are, we are showing? Yeah, the the inspiration from my side is more coming from the technique. I'm I'm an engineer, and uh, but also important to know that we are working in team huh, for the innovation for the next products, and uh, we are also working very close with designers, different designer external, and then by sharing our concept, technical concept, and together, then we, we bring the end product. The designer come and bring his emotion also to the product, to the design, and all together, uh, it's really a, a teamwork. Also with, of course, the, the customer, because he is, he is very uh, also part of the, of the process, naturally. And... Uh, <clears throat> I would say that each product has its own process in the in the, yeah. in, in the development and the innovation. Yeah. Yeah. So you are mentally very open to get all sorts of inspirations to then put all the pieces together. Yes. And once mm -hmm. again, coming back to the constraints, we need these constraints at the beginning, starting by, by a white paper, white page, 
is very difficult. We need to know, okay, what, what is, is the wanted by the brand? What is the direction? Even is uh, not clear uh, at the beginning, but that is already something very important to know. Okay, we work in that direction. And what I can say, yeah. every, every time when we really focus in one direction, we find new ideas, new concepts. That's really interesting. So we have, um, obviously, the limited edition. We are a platform promoting independent watchmaking. We are official retailers for Cyrus, and we are very proud to be. And thank you for giving us this uh, opportunity. If one of our collectors was coming with an idea, I've just seen, uh, for example, today, uh, my friend Amr, from the Orophile, just was just uh, presenting his uh, debutune, which is a bespoke piece that is developed in collaboration with the brand, yeah. uh, which is uh, amazing because, uh, you know, just, working on one single piece for one single client is something that from the producer point of view uh, as you are is not you know something easy to do but does cyrus offer this opportunity of eventual personalization and the bespoke features yeah cyrus is open to to discuss a collaboration i think is is as it, it has to be discussed because if it is cyrus <laughs> it it has also to fit probably some also conditions, but uh, it, it would be nice to discuss and, and to find a way to, to develop this watch, of course. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. So it's good to know for collectors that Cyrus is, is open from that perspective, which is a real added value for the independent watchmakers. We have a couple of questions now, uh, Jean-Francois, from our uh, viewers. Uh, Ken Ping is asking if we could name some examples of luxury independent watch brands that are not 100% Swiss made. Uh, so uh, it would, if, you are, if you refer to those that claim to be Swiss made but they're not Swiss made, unfortunately we can't, we can't you know, uh, indulge in this exercise. But no. it's, sufficient, it's sufficient to know for you, Ken Ping, you just have to dig and understand if the movement is Japanese, if the cases are made in a in China, uh, or some of the parts are made somewhere else, it's easy to, uh, to find, actually. And uh, I think when a brand is openly stating that, and sometimes they do, it's absolutely fine. Everyone yeah. Is, yeah. You know, is free to do what he thinks is best. But it's not our place to, to make a list now. No. There are also some brands that make nearly absolutely everything uh, abroad, like I can mention Constantine Chaikin, for example, who makes... Uh, you know, most of most of his production is completely Moscow-based. So, uh, and that this enriches the world of, of watchmaking. So, just um, I don't know if you want to say something, Jean-François, but I, I, I of course, uh, uh, yeah, I was trying to cover that one without having to answer directly. Yeah, no, is 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 not the, the the reason to give to to give names. It's just to know that yes. that exists. And as you said, if it's transparent and the people said, okay, we proceed like that because we can co offer a better price or po better positioning, no problem. But it's just that the customer has to know what is inside, yeah. how it is made, and uh, the transparency is very important. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. It is, you, like you said, we could have a, just a broadcast of an hour talking about this topic. This is a mm -hmm. massive, massive topic. But it's, uh, yeah, let's leave it for another time. Uh, Giancarlo is asking, are you, with, I love this question, are you looking at the others uh, independent? And I add also other brands in general. Do you look at what the others do? I asked the same question to Ludovic Balouard the other day. Ludovic said, I look at them before I started because I thought they were doing all doing incredible things, and I was asking myself, "How am I going to do <laughs> to be that, as good as that?" <laughs> what is your point of view, uh, Jean-François? Do you look at others? Are you obsessed? Are you relaxed, or you don't look at all? No, I look, of course, to to the others, and with a great pleasure, because I I note that there is a place for many brands uh, as, as, as soon as they as each one has his place that means that he has identity but 
there is place, there is much place for the innovation. It's no end by by the new ideas and new new concepts. There is not a pressure, is not a problem, and I'm happy to see that that we are many also uh, creative in this domain. Absolutely, absolutely, and also because uh, everyone is pushing the other ones to new limits, yeah. no? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and that's right. positive. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. No, it's fantastic. You know, uh, it's a bit the same for us, uh, Jean-Francois, when in 2015 we started and said we're going to do an online platform only dedicated to the independence. Uh, people are looking at us and saying, you're doing what? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, 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 the answer is there are so many stories still that need to be told. And I, um, I'm very happy that we managed to bring you today because you are not one of those spaces that we you know, are seen that often on the social medias. And I think your story is absolutely fascinating. And I have to thank you for the, for the time you spent with us. It was, it was very, very interesting. Thank you, uh, Pietro, also for the opportunity you gave me also to, to speak about my passion. And uh, also, hello to everybody. <laughs> thank you for thank sharing you that. Much. Yeah. Thank you. So once again, this interview will be on our Instagram uh, TV forever, <laughs> basically. It will go also on our newsletter and on our YouTube channel. So if you have any questions, you will watch in this not live, let us know. We're going to pass the questions to uh, Jean-Francois and, uh, and uh, try to get back to you. So thanks again from, uh, uh, from the limited edition. Thanks again, Jean-Francois. I hope to see you, you very soon in, in person you. this time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.